and now it's 4 p.m. So hi folks, today I want to talk mainly about the upcoming new Sonic gear and Sonic gear that we can expect to get in 2025. The reason for the live stream is that this week Phototrend, a French magazine, interviewed Sony manager but also Fujifilm manager Nikon Canon and Panasonic manager and in my opinion there are a couple of easter eggs, some small hints that are interesting, um, interesting to discuss with you and maybe I'm reading too much into it or maybe you see something that I did, didn't see so uh, we will walk you, I will walk you through that interview the highlights of the interview so that we can discuss this and you can um, make your questions and I will answer them. Um, just a technical note, questions are only um, possible by subscribers so if you are not a sub subscriber you cannot um, submit your questions so subscribe if you want but I had to do this so that everything keeps is clean otherwise I have to um, remove you know, ugly comments all the time and so forth. It takes me a lot of time to, to filter everything out. So only subscriber can uh, ask questions on this channel right now on this live chat. So uh, let me show you first the big news uh, of the week that is here. Of course, um, let's see, I will clear the comment from Miguel. So. Um, the big news of the week, of course, is that Sony has very likely scheduled a major alpha announcement event for late November. I posted this info on soniafrumos.com and um, I didn't tell you yet the date and what to expect. Um, I have to confess I know the date uh, and I know a tiny bit more about that alleged full-frame Sony e camera that will be announced in late November but that few, the couple of info that I got from the trusted sources I used that info to double check other information I received from other sources to be sure that they are sending me the right info that's the only way to build up some reliable information so apology if I don't share you everything I know right now it's not because I'm mean to you but it's the only way to build up trust with sources and see yeah to get to get more information and to be sure that i tr mostly not i mostly write on rumors shared by trusted sources again a reminder to always separate the videos i make when i talk about trusted sources or unreliable unreliable news sources and so forth i see people still pissed off that my wild rumors I post just for fun or sake of discussion or because other rumor sites are talking about when they don't become true those rumors they are pissed off with me again I understand one thing are, so are rumors from my trusted sources and other rumors from other trusted non-trusted sources other websites I cannot be accountable for that and I always remind you of that but now let's talk Sony so I'm now 90%, 95% certain that we will have that announcement, 95% certain there will be a new full frame E-mount camera. I got a hint about what kind of camera to expect but I cannot share it yet to, because I need to verify it with other sources and collect more info. All I can hint to you is this is an exciting model for sure, so we are not getting, I mean every model can be exciting for some people but this is like a major thing so not a uh, something low end or definitely not the ZVE-1 2 which for some would be exciting but it's an entry level full frame camera so don't expect something like this um, there will be something major I hope that in the next one two weeks I can finally tell you what camera to expect and also what lens to expect but I'm working on it uh, talking a lot with uh, different sources some sources got also conflict information because Sony of course is uh, teasing already about this with their influencers and so forth and sending out some mixed information so I have to watch out some people already that I know for a long time uh, got word about other kind of cameras that I know are not likely to come so it's kind of a, a, a game you know a, a cat and mouse game where you try to um, not fall into the traps so that's why I also am very slow in sharing the rumors when I have them. Uh, now the very important news, uh, news I want to discuss with you today are the interviews made by Phototrend. So 
now I will switch over to Phototrend so that you can see the French magazine. I have to find it first here. Um, they interviewed all the major managers from the major companies like Nikon, Fujifilm, you can see Panasonic, Canon and Sony. Uh, they only, you are welcome to read them all. I use Google Translate to um, read the original text so that you understand it if you don't speak French. I particularly found the Sony and the Fujifilm interview interesting. Now, a very important reminder when it comes to managers. Managers, one, will never tell you about what's coming next. And sometimes, actually very often, managers don't really know what's coming because those are European managers and they don't get informed by their Japanese headquarters what's up next until the very last minute. Do we get a general view about the strategy, but not super detailed info about what's coming in terms of cameras or lenses? So I'm sure they don't know everything uh, at, at various degrees <laughs> with the various camp companies, but uh, they know something. And I want today to talk about particularly a Sony interview and a tiny bit about the Fujifilm interview. So. Let's check over what the Sony manager said at Phototrend. Again, thanks Phototrend for the amazing job doing that interview. And here you see Sony manager Fabrice uh, Abouaf. I don't know what the name, how to spell it, but he talked with Phototrend and there are a couple of points that are very interesting. Uh, first of all, he confirmed that Sony is the leader in terms in the full frame hybrid market. So Sony is doing extremely well in, uh, in France and in Europe. The Sony E7 IV cells are still strong despite the strong competition from Nikon and Canon. So Sony says it's still a hot seller, which doesn't mean that the Sony E7 V cannot come soon. Uh, so don't misunderstand this as a proof that the Sony E7 V is not coming anytime soon. Um, of course, Sony wants to avoid that you get to the point that the Sony a 7 IV is not selling well anymore uh, because of the competition. So they, according to the info I got, the Sony a 7 IV will be on market, on market the first half of 2025. That's what I got from two trusted sources. So unless there is another delay, whatever, I think mostly we are getting a Sony a 7 IV on market the first half of Sony E7 of the 2025. Now let's move on to what they said about the Sony E7S3 and what really uh, made me feel a bit strange was this. He said that the E7S3 follows a normal life cycle for a product in this range and I tend to disagree. I think the Sony E7S3 is pretty old. It's not normal that it's that old. It, there should have already been a replacement by now. It's more than four years now. And so um, when he says this is a normal life cycle, no, the Sony A7S III is in dire need of a replacement in my opinion, but let me know in the comment system. Uh, so I disagree with him that it has a normal life cycle. And he also says the E7S3 still has its place in the market. Uh, of course, he has to say that uh, it's still on sale. It's still promoted by Sony. Of course, it has a place, but he didn't directly answer the question if there will be an E7S4 or not. Net now, let's move on. What's very interesting is that he confirms there's a lot of demand for those popular for a Sony version of those popular lenses like the Canon 100-300 and the Nikon 120-300 2.8. Those lenses I know from my contacts with stores that they are selling really well in Europe, United States and so forth. So I am pretty certain that Sony engineers are listening and, and, prep and working on that making this lens. So I didn't get any info from trusted sources about such a Sony lens coming anytime soon, but I know sales are strong and I know Sony knows that. So I think they will do uh, what they can to make a 100 to 300 millimeter 2.8 GM lens for the Sony Iman system. So I'm 
I bet everything on it that they will make this lens. I just don't know when it will hit the market. My hope it it is is that it's coming in 2025. But uh, let me know. If you happen to stumble on some info about this lens, if it's coming, if you talk with Sony managers and they give you some more hints, please, please let me know. Uh, use the email address as a sonyofrumors.com, sonyofrumors at gmail.com to contact me and let me know if you have some info about this lens. About Sony making a camera that competes with the Fujifilm X106. He said that I believe many ambassadors and professional photographers have already given this type of feedback to Sony engineers. As for what the photo holds, I can't predict. So this is probably the most interesting part, at least for me, and I am biased. So um, I really want this camera to be true, like a fixed lens, full frame camera. So I am very biased. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But the fact that they openly shared the info that they got a ton of requests for this camera is ki kind of an admission that there is a market for this. So they are aware there's a pressure on Sony to make such a model. So I give it a 70-80% chance that Sony is working on a new full frame fixed lens camera and that it might be even released in 2025. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and that's probably the most interesting part of the interview that they openly share that information. Of course, he cannot say that the Sony RX1, R3 or whatever the name will be is coming. Uh, he cannot do that. But he said like, yeah, there is a lot of requests for that. So uh, it gives me hope. About the APS-C segment, yeah, he again stressed that the APS-C segment is very important for Sony, but he didn't share any info about the strategy from now on. And about future 1.2 primes and 2.0 zoom, I don't have information about or, or about such product releases, okay? So the wrap up here is that uh, Sony is still doing very well in terms of sales when it comes to the Sony E7 IV. Um, the Sony E7 IV is the most sold Sony camera uh, worldwide. That's an info I also have. So it's, it's still selling strong. Uh, but I told you I am betting on the Sony E75 coming the first half of 2025. He didn't share anything about the E7S4 and in his opinion the E7S3 is still in the normal release cycle, which I think it's not, it's, he's just doing a marketing uh, trick here, telling that everything is, is perfectly fine, but I don't think so. The E7S3 is really the most outdated full frame alpha camera and in our need of replacement, if Sony wants to replace it, uh, my bet right now, that is, like I told you in my previous video, that the FX3 2 will probably replace both the FX3 and the E7S3. But I might be wrong on this, it's just a feeling, nothing uh, that I heard from a trusted source. The most important thing of that interview is that the, they're really feeling the pressure of making a Sony full frame fixed lens camera. And that's a confession that gives me a tiny bit of hope that we are finally getting such a model at best in 2025. Moving on about Fuji, there's something to say here. Uh, a couple of interesting info that the European manager Frank Bernard shared in the interview. First of all, they own 40% of the non-full frame market. And that's quite a lot for a company. So having 40% in the non-full frame market means they're really, really enjoying a ton of sales. Um, there are a lot of info that I'm skipping now uh, because it's uh, you can read it on mirrorlessrumors.com. I posted it there today. Uh, you can read the details about the new XM5 and so forth. That's not so important about AI, about the lens. And so that's not really what I want to discuss. There are two points that I want to discuss. First of all, Fujifilm will not make a film camera, which is kind of uh, pity. He says that there is the, the market is still very limited. So he doesn't see a reason to make a film camera. Um, now, I'm part of that niche of guys that do still shoot with film cameras, mainly the Mamiya 7. I have two cameras uh, from Mamiya, so two Mamiya 7 two. Um, 
amazing eye shoot uh, dia so I like the image quality, the, the look from those uh, images and the film, but I am aware that I'm part of a niche. Uh, Pentax made a ton of pre-orders on the Pentax 17, so there is at the moment a big demand, particularly from young people, but I don't know if this is still, if this is a trend that will still increase further or um, go fade away sometime. So Fujifilm for now thinks that they don't have to enter the film market, which I think is pity. I would love to get an X-mount film camera uh, where you can still use the X-mount lenses for shooting film. Uh, of course, it would be half frame in this case because they, they, they cannot take the full 35 millimeter film size. So I think they should do it, but they know the numbers and they think there's no market for this. Um, they were, of course, surprised about the X106 success. Uh, the prediction were ambitious, but the demand was even stronger than their predictions. And the demand was accelerated on Chinese social media. So the camera did go viral and made a ton of sales, in particular in China. And they will hope to deliver all of the pre-orders within the next 10, 10 to 11 months. So it will still, still take one year to ship out their pre-orders on the Fujifilm X106. Now imagine if Sony would have released a competitor by now, like a full-frame RX1, R3, or even a APS-C fixed lens camera, they could have probably taken some of those uh, customers that were interested in the Fujifilm camera and that they don't want to wait for a year to get it. Uh, so I think there's a bit of a missed opportunity, but of course, um, you cannot just make a, a, such a camera in one year. It takes a couple of years and probably Sony was co uh, unprepared on this trend. So the rest of the interview you can read on mirrorlesshumus.com and again sonyofhumus.com you can read the Sony interview and the original long interview is available on Phototrend. So that's what I wanted to discuss with you today, those uh, interviews from Sony and from Fujifilm. The Canon, Nikon, Panasonic interviews are a bit less interesting, there's some small points, but there's nothing particularly innovating. Um, so uh, the wrap up here is again that uh, Sony is feeling the pressure on making a 100, 300 millimeter 2.8 lens. And I think they will do it. They're feeling the pressure on making a new full frame fixed lens camera. And here, I hope they will do it. And for the rest in um, November, we should finally get their, the first full frame email camera. I will now read through your questions and see if I can answer them as best as I can. So first I scroll back because I see there are already many questions. I will choose a couple of those. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a guy, Brandon, asking me about the 400 millimeter gem, if there will be a, a new version, I don't think. Uh, I have no info about this, but I would be surprised if they would release a new version 2025. There are a ton of other, other lenses they have to do before they update the 400 gem that is already a, a great lens. Uh, yeah, the Lumix S5D was seems to have been that camera that was previously registered in China. I'm still not sure. We need to see the S5D, what the code is once uh, it's on the market. There's a code and then we can see if it matches the re registration in China. Although the S5D is only, as far as I know, if I'm not mistaken, made for the European market. So maybe the Chinese reg registration could really be another camera model. Um, there might be some interesting news regarding uh, some serious Lumix full frame camera coming in January. So cross, let's cross the fingers that by, by then we will get finally the S1H2 or the S1R2. Those are the cameras that we really want from Panasonic. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that, that the hate comments uh, help on algorithms. Uh, 
uh, they don't help on my psyche. So uh, where I, the way I deal with hate comments is ju I just ban them. I don't care. Uh, hate comments are not critics. They are critical comments that are expressed in a polite manner, with respect and with the intention to improve the channel. Those are accepted. So if you just write uh, this channel is shit, then of course I'm not going to approve it and I'm going to ban you. But if you say no, this live stream was bad because of that, that you should do that, that, then 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 of course I will listen to you. Uh, just talk to me like a real person. I I still one of those guys that pretend that people talk to me like I'm there with my kids, with my family. We're drinking a beer and then we're having a discussion. That should be the way we write and talk on social networks and it's not happening. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm aware this is not going to happen anytime soon. I didn't hear anything about the 35 uh, 1.4 GM. Uh, Fujifilm X-Pro4 coming to 2024. I think Fuji Rumors wrote about this that it's not coming in 2025, sorry, 2025. But uh, check out Fujirumos, they wrote something about this. Uh, the cat wants to jump in, wait a second. It, there is a real strong rain outside and she wants to go back uh, in the warmth. So uh, about the 2472.0, I didn't get additional info. Uh, all I know about this lens, I told you in my previous video, I'm not going to repeat myself, so check out the previous video. The A12 will be the flagship camera. If, if that's the camera coming in late November, of course it will be the flagship camera. And like I told you, I don't expect it to have global shutter at all. So uh, the A93 is really a niche camera. I don't have specs, uh, at least not confirmed specs on that new model. So I cannot give you an answer about this. Uh, don't worry. Uh, Sony A7S4, no info at all. The 24 GM2, I don't have an info about this lens. Any FX news? Uh, the only, I got an, uh, an additional FX news about the FX9 sort of successor. It was ready for launch in September and something happened. Sony decided to not announce it yet. And that's again coming from trusted sources. Of course, you can now tell me now, yes, I'm making up a story. Uh, you're free to think uh, whatever you want. Uh, if I would be mis, I trust the source. So the only way this is wrong is that he, for the first time, is wrong, which happens. That one time out of after a couple of years they share wrong info. So the cat now wants to go out again. So. Uh, So that's the info I got. I hope that in the next weeks I can get some info. And what's very important, in late November, we are not getting an FX model. So this would be an alpha E-mount full from camera, not a, the FX9 successor. Let's move on with your questions. Um, The 24 gem, yeah, the 24 gem was, I think Miguel is right, that it was the first lens that was uh, optically extraordinary, but in a very compact size. As you know, I told you many times that one of the strengths of the Sony Emon system is the lenses, because they are stunning when it comes to optical performance, but also very compact. And the 24 gem 1.4, initiated a trend and then we saw many primes and zooms with that kind of uh, design of ha achieving the max possible quality in the smallest package. That's why I'm interested in the 2472.0 because I think that unlike the Canon 2872.0, this lens is more usable because of the 24 millimeter wide end, but it will still be compact. It will be big, it will be not uh, like, a, uh, weight nothing, but it still will be usable if you use it on a camera. That's what I expect from 2472.0. Sony has no 85 1.2, true, uh, but I'm working on that rumor because I've, I'm not sure that they will not do that lens. 
I dropped the bump here. Yeah. That's an info I never shared before. I'm now I'm working on that rumor because I started to get something on this. Um, yeah, let's see uh, more questions. Uh, uh, sorry if it takes some time, but there are many questions and I want to be sure that I, I read them all. Um, let's see. Let's see, move on. No, the Sony E93 has not a dual layer sensor. It has a new global shutter sensor. And I think the global sh shutter sensor will likely, that's my speculation, find its way also, maybe in the future, FX32, or the E7S4 if it's coming despite my skepticism. But I can see the FX32 having the same 24 megapixel sensor, global shutter sensor from the E93 because uh, I'm born actually as a filmmaker, so I studied cinema and I made a lot of documentaries and global shutter for me brings a ton of benefits and that small drop in dynamic range makes no difference at all for me. Do we get the Lumix S9 with the FEVF? Uh, nope, I didn't hear anything about this at all. I think it would be cool if they would do the Alex, Alex 100 um, Micro Four Thirds camera. If they would do it in full frame, that would be nice. But at the moment, I know that Elmount Panasonic in general is struggling making sales. So for them, it's difficult to make niche cameras. I don't, uh, uh, I don't know. For them, probably it's more important to make the S1R2 and the S1H2. E74, I, so I don't have specs yet, so that's just speculation, but it will not have global shutter. I can't, there is no point in having global shutter on the E75. Uh, Sorry, E75, yeah. Yep. Uh, the E93 has, can do nearly everything perfectly, but indeed for some, the 24 megapixel resolution is a limitation. Uh, I know sports photographers, some photographers that also love to crop into the images. And when you have 24 megapixels, that becomes more difficult. If you would have a global shutter sensor with 50 megapixel sensor, this would be amazing for some. So um, it will happen eventually, but I don't think that the Sony A12 will have global shutter. But that's just a speculation from my side now. New A7C, I didn't get anything at all. We got two A7C cameras in 2023. Don't think there is any other A7C camera coming. Uh, can firmware updates overcome limitation of global shutter in, in terms of ease of performance and dynamic range? D don't think you can do really anything at all yet. You, of course, you can tweak something with algorithms, like just a tiny bit, of course, but uh, there is a bottleneck at the hardware level. Uh, this, the global shutter is simply not as sensitive as a normal rolling shutter yet. <laughs> Fro nose photo. Uh, I might do. In uh, I'm, it's 15 years in this business, and they saw. I know all those kind of people, more or less. Maybe I, one day I should really talk about what the popularity makes to some people. Some people really, um, yeah, it, it, they become of an avatar of themselves. And he's surely a nice guy. I talked to him, but it's just weird for me to talk to him. I always got get odd and strange answers. I give up. He can do whatever he wants, he can joke about me, I don't care anymore. Uh, I've, his victim, not a victim, a victim of his own narrative and success, and he cannot, cannot go out from this. That's my opinion. He, of course, will say that I, I'm wrong and I don't know him, probably maybe he's right. So um, I will always stay true to myself, uh, myself 100% and not fool around. I prefer to have 20,000 followers on YouTube and be a normal person than get crazy and unpolite and respectful and a tiny bit of liar 
And that's what I think of him, but not because a bad person. It's just that he became a, an avatar, a, a figure and a narrative. And the things, I think he has to lose uh, being like that. But that's an opinion of a nobody and they're probably wrong and you can forget about it. Sony Punk and Lens Zoomer. I posted something about a 28 2.8 lens, but I don't know. This was something I got from an anonymous source. So again, th in this case could be completely BS. I would definitely love to get a 28 2.8, but I got some other lens a couple of days ago that I really, really looking forward to test is the Viltox 28mm 4.5. They sent me one for free, but I paid. In Italy, you pay so much taxes that basically it's like paying the lens. Uh, it would have been better for me to buy it once available here in Italy so I can deduct it from the taxes. So actually, I'm uh, wasting a tiny bit of money by receiving a lens for free from them. But I really wanted it because that Viltrox lens, um, image quality, of course, it's uh, uh, not a sh really sharp, big netting, uh, chromatic aberration. You can all the negatives you can put inside, but instead of having a lens cap, you can put this one on the camera and on the fly. If very suddenly you need to take a picture, you have a lens that actually works, and the images are actually surprisingly okay because they have a certain flare that actually I like and they're sharp enough in the center. So uh, I like this. It's also out of focus, which is very handy. Um, so I'm actually really loving it. There is gear that is that you like, not because they, from a technical point of view, they are superb, but simply because they, 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 they do the job. You feel like you can use them for something and that Viltrox is really great. Open gate. I got this, this question a couple of times. Um, from what I heard, uh, Sony has a strategy to offer more and more paid software features. So they might give you uh, more features on your cameras in the future, but you will have probably to pay for it. Uh, that's uh, also, on, I think, on the Sony financial statement, latest financial statement, they really made it clear that this is an area where they want to see most possibility of making new revenue. So selling you the camera with a low margin of, um, is that a re uh, not revenue, of ben um, no benefit, now I, the word is not coming, for profit, of course. Uh, and then selling you the software after that. It sounds terrible, I know, uh, but that's the way a way to make the alpha lineup still uh, profitable. And it's also a way, like it or not, so that you can get new features in time because you know Sony with the firmware strategy is really not the best, as we know. Um, so maybe if they know they can make money by adding new features, maybe they will do it. Hey, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know much more than you, Matt. Uh, thanks, thanks, but no, you're flattering me. Um, no, I'm just clicking on... Yeah, do you think Sony should put the A1 sensor into a fixed body like the FX1? Um, I didn't hear anything about that. I don't think this is going to happen, but uh, just a feeling. I think we are going to see the A93 global shutter sensor on an FX body in the future. In some white rumors, I read that DJI could maybe buy Lumix. Any opinion? First time I hear that, and I think actually that would... Now I'm probably pissing off Panasonic user. I think that would be great. Uh, because I know Panasonic has a lot of tech knowledge. They're making most of the Leica cameras, for example, except of the M series. But like the Leica SL3 and so forth, they are they have basically a Panasonic cameras with the Leica software and uh, some Leica, of course, the Leica design. Uh, so I can see DJI, it could be a possibility for DJI if they want to make full frame less cameras to buy Panasonic and then at their knowledge, uh, merge them with Panasonic hardware knowledge. I think that would be 
great, but uh, let me know where you actually read this. I want to read more about this. But it's the first time I hear about it. No, I didn't hear anything about the new battery, but uh, I'm in those days, I'm actually in discussion with that source that shared me that info first a couple of months ago. And we are discussing about this and about the next camera. So he's sharing now details and we will see soon if that source is right or not, because there is an announcement in November. So let's hope that, uh, yeah, that if he's right on the camera info he's sharing now, then he's also right about the battery. Maybe we are also getting a new battery. Do you know why there is a delay in this more fast? Uh, wait, on, on patents, I see any kind of crazy patents and only a small amount of optical designs uh, then will be made and make it on the market. So it's normal for them to make a ton of patents pr to protect themselves from other companies if they wouldn't patent all kinds of different lenses and uh, cameras. And one day they will decide later to make such a model, they would probably get into some issues. So uh, don't get to focus on patents. Um, only less than 50%, probably 10 or 20% of the patents you see from Tamron or Sony, whatever, will be made. And they are more made to protect themselves. Uh, if one day they make a lens, they can say, yeah, we patented it this six years ago. I even saw, like I told you in many videos, uh, medium format Sony lenses. There are patents describing the exact opti optical design of Sony medium format lenses. And not only for the small medium format size of, for example, the Fujifilm GFX cameras, but also the bigger size, the one that Phase 1 is using or the Hasselblad on their top models. Sony made such patents, even cur curved medium format sensors with lenses designed for that curved sensor, where the lenses are basically the same size of full frame sensors, but you have a more than twice bigger sensor. So this is quite stunning. Sony patented this, but it doesn't mean they're making it. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know the actual sales numbers of cameras from Sony. Sony doesn't share them also on their financial report. You can only rely on what managers say. And for example, the managers keep saying that the Sony a7 IV is the best selling model worldwide. I think the Sony, when it comes to full frame, uh, overall, I think the ZV-E10 is still the best selling Himan camera. I checked yesterday on Amazon bestseller ranking and we still have the ZV E10 II on top in the US selling better than any other camera, even better than the ZV E10 II. So, and yeah, it's crazy, I know. Uh, the FX3 II this year, no, there will be one announcement in November, uh, but it's an alpha related announcement, not FX, FX. I hope the FX3 is coming in 2025, also because it was has been announced in 2021, so it would be, or uh, if I'm not wrong, so it's not the newest uh, camera, and I can see Sony making an FX3 2, fingers crossed, with the new A93 global shutter sensor. New displays on the A12, I hope so, I hate uh, Sony low resolution screens. I would love Sony to give us proper screens that are bright in also in bright conditions outside. Um, I luckily have the Sony E7R5, so I'm mostly using the EVF, which is stunning, but the LCD release, I, I would love to get bigger screens and brighter screens. So, um, but I don't know, I didn't hear anything about the Sony A12 or the Sony A75 having really a big step forward in screens. I can I expect some improvement, but nothing revolutionary. Any rumors from CF, CF Express are cards from Sony. Uh, the new 4.0 cards, you know, have been announced by OVC uh, and many other manufacturers, nothing from Sony. 
but I think Sony will announce them probably even with the next camera coming November. I expect from now on that most Sony Alpha cameras will support the new 4.0 standard simply because the benefit is really great. You have double the read and write speed and that really brings a lot of improvements. How is the Z6 III doing? Is there enough sales? I didn't ask my sources. I'm connected to many stores, obviously, large stores. Uh, I asked them about Fuji, Sony. I never asked them about the Z6 III. I don't know how the Z6 III is doing. Anything in the future Z8 line up? I have nothing at all. Uh, sorry, but I was the first to tell you about the Nikon ZFC a couple of years ago. I broke that rumor that was right on this. I actually should check back on the source and ask him uh, if he has more knowledge about uh, ZF gear, gear ZF designed lenses or lenses made for the ZF cameras. Um, I will ask him about this. How much will the next camera cost? Like I told you, I still don't know 100% what camera is coming. If it's the A12, A75, or maybe something else that I don't know of. Uh, I still didn't see a price drop. If it's the Sony A12, I still didn't see a price drop on the Sony A1. So <laughs> that makes me worry that if it's the A12, that it's it will be quite expensive. Um, let's see, but I don't have any info yet. I don't have info about any uh, firmware update on the A1 or other cameras except of the info that has been officially sh shared by Sony, so sorry I cannot help you here. Any chance the A1 or A9 gets put into the range for like the A1C or A9C? I didn't hear anything about uh, other C camera models. I think we are done for now. The A7C2, the A7CR have been announced one year ago exactly. I don't think we can expect new A7C cameras anytime soon, probably not in 2025. So I, I, I don't see also why they should do it. I have no rumor about any EVF hot shoe attachment. Okay, folks, more, uh, there are some more questions I will not answer yet. But uh, we are now 42 minutes into the live stream. I think we had our nice discussion about um, the rumor upcoming announcement in November. Uh, I told at the beginning of the video, I know more than I told you in my previous video than I wrote on SonyFilms.com. Actually, I have three more info that I didn't share. Uh, for example, the announcement date, I have it. Uh, I also have probably what the name of the camera that will be announced and also some info about the lens but i'm using that info to double check the all the rumors i'm receiving from other sources and also i'm, I'm waiting double trip to double and triple check because sometimes sources get fed with wrong information or they misinterpret some info they get um, so they mean it well and still can do mistakes uh, or i misunderstand them because sometimes they don't really write perfectly what they mean and I have to uh, make sure that I understand it right. But I know a bit more and I hope that in the next weeks I can slowly start to tell you exactly more about the camera, the lens and the announcement date. Um, and also the interview for me was interesting because it gave me hope again that we are getting a full frame fixed lens camera, probably not in November unless I'm... Uh, the Sony will surprise us all, but I have high hopes for this. I think it would be quite a nice uh, camera. At least that's my opinion. Uh, okay, folks, that's about it. Um, again, uh, this will be an exciting time. The probably best, best time ever for Sony Alpha community is now. So between now and late November. And in general, like I told you, in 2025, I really see Sony being a bit more interesting than they did in 2024, where we only got the ZV-E102 and a couple of G lenses and a new GM285 update, which is nice. Oh, everything is nice, but nothing really crazy. Uh, but now the crazy stuff is coming. Hopefully the 2470 20 the Sony 12 the Sony E75, 
and uh, maybe even that fixed lens full frame camera. I know I don't have confirmation on that, but I hope. And then 2025 will turn out to be really a great year. Um, that's it for today, folks. Again, I kindly invite you to subscribe if you really enjoy chatting with me and seeing the videos and chatting about future cameras. Uh, again, a reminder to send me info using the contact form on sonyoforumus.com. Uh, use a nickname if you uh, keep sending me rumors, I can recognize it, that you are a trusted source. And also you can contact me using the email address sonyoforumus at gmail.com. So that's it for today, folks. Uh, it's really getting dark now here in the Alps. It's still raining like hell. Um, an ugly day, but... Uh, at least I'm happy that uh, the next weeks I can see you more often on this YouTube channel because there will be quite some rumors coming. Some we are talking about great gear, really interesting gear. Maybe not for everyone, but at least something we can love or hate potently and not something that will go, or go unnoticed like a ZV-E.